Hey YouTube, um, we're excited to have you in store today to go over interesting facts. We have picked out five different animals that we're going to show you. Uh, give you a little store tour on the way back. We're going to start in the reptiles, uh, going over some interesting things about a blue tongue skink. Uh, so follow me and we'll get started. Give you a little over, overview, show you some of the baby birds that we have in right now. Don't mind that light, it just burned out. I have a light coming for it. Don't try not to get people on. One of our rescued kitties, but we have a transport coming tomorrow. All right, back in the reptile department. So guys, we are a full line pet store. If you're not familiar with any of our other videos, uh, we've been open since 2016. We have a full line boarding and daycare kennel. Uh, we specialize in baby birds here, reptiles, saltwater fish, we do it all. Um, and today, like I said, we're gonna be giving you fun facts about five different animals. So we're gonna start here with a juvenile blue tongue skink. He's getting close to full grown. They can grow up to two feet. Uh, obviously, they get their name, the Blue Tongue Skink, from their bright blue tongue, if he sticks it out. There it is. Um, they actually use that tongue to smell for their food. So they are scavengers, they, um, and they're omnivores, meaning they eat just about anything. These guys are known to even enjoy canned dog food and canned cat food. Uh, they eat insects, they eat snails, um, and they're a very, very docile pet because of their very short legs you can see there. They do not move very fast, which makes them very susceptible to predators. The blue tongue skink, when confronted head on, will puff itself up, flash its blue tongue, which could sometimes give predators um, cause to stop and think that the animal could be venomous, um, and they'll hiss very loudly, but their bite is not very dangerous, so they can't really defend themselves in that manner. If they're being chased, they can actually drop their tail off, which will give their predator something to munch on, um, and that allows them to give um, to have time to get away, to run away from their predator. The tail will then grow back later. Um, these guys live up to 20 years, so very, very interesting. They seldom leave their burrow, though, other than when they're hunting, so. And that is the blue tongue skink for you. All right, guys, the next animal that we're gonna give you some interesting facts on today is the Colombian red-tailed boa. He's, this is a male, so he's a little bit smaller than the female counterparts. The males grow five to seven feet, while the females will grow seven to 10 feet. Uh, the length disparity there is based on the females uh, needing to be able to carry eggs, which they carry up to 30 eggs when they're reproducing. Uh, this guy is an adult, so he's about six feet when he's fully spread out, and he weighs probably over 20 pounds. Um, just like the blue tongue skink, they smell their food with their tongue. Um, and I know Ted, behind the camera there's got some information he'll add, right. add for you. Well this guy's named Spartacus. He is a store pet here. Um, but some interesting facts about them. They are uh, a boa constrictor. Um, there's about 40 species of snakes that uh, have boa in their name. But uh, the Colombian red tail is a subspecies of one of the ones that um, are under the actual genius species boa. Um, so their species is the only one under that actual genius. Um, so these guys actually kill by waiting for their prey in trees, grabbing them and then wrapping two to three times around them. Scientists used to think that they were suffocating them. Uh, however, they are not suffocating them. Then they actually wrap them up to cut blood supply off to the brain. Um, and while they have them wrapped up, their, uh, their scales actually can pick up the heartbeat of the animal. So whenever the heart stops beating, that's when they know when to eat. Uh, let's see. So boas are also... I feel like um, a boa model right now. Yeah. So <laughs> Spartacus is being quite active today. Usually he just hangs out. but um, So they actually give birth to live babies. Um, so the female actually holds the eggs inside of her until they ha hatch, and then she gives birth to them. They come out fully dependent, slithering, moving on their own, and ready to go. That's actually, I did not know. It's a pretty amazing fact right there. All right, before we move on to our next animal, <laughs> uh, 
I just want to mention these guys are known to live about 20 years in the wild and they live up to 40 years in captivity because of the standard and specialized care we can give them. They actually have a longer life expectancy in captivity than they do in uh, the wild. So we're going to put Spartacus back here and we're actually going to move on to uh, a saltwater fish which is going to be you. All right, so in here we have a bunch of bubble tip clownfish. Uh, we also have some turbo snails. Uh, but these here are Ocellaris clownfish. So there are 30 known species of clownfish. Uh, they live in warm waters of sheltered reefs in the Pacific and Indian Ocean. Um, schools of clownfish have a strict hierarchy. Uh, so there are three in here. These three were considered a, a, a school because they have worked out their hierarchy. Um, so how that works is usually the one that's in charge is the most aggressive female so all clownfish are born male but when uh once they figure out their hierarchy the most dominant will become a female but when the dominant female in that school dies the dominant male will turn itself back into a dominant female so these guys are living in anemones that's where they live most of their lives and the special things about anemones is they actually sting other fish. So clownfish are immune to their sting. Um, so not many animals can actually host in the anemones. Um, down here, it's hard to see them, but there's actually an anemone crab down there. They also can host inside the anemone without getting stung. So they also, whenever they're breeding, they breed and lay their eggs in the anemone. However, the male clownfish are the dedicated fathers. They prepare the nest for the females. They guard the eggs and then they clean the nest. Another cool fact about these guys is they communicate by making clicking and popping noises. Um, so in the ocean, clownfish are not great swimmers, but what they do to feed is they swim out onto the reef a little further away from their anemone than they like to go, and they lure in larger fish. Once they lure the fish in, the anemone will sting the fish, kill it, and then start to eat it. While it's eating it, there's uh, pieces of the fish that come off and that's what the clownfish eats. So that's a little bit about clownfish. Sweet, sweet. All right guys, the next animal we're gonna talk to you guys about today is the guinea pig. So we actually have guinea pigs and skinny pigs, which is the hairless version of the guinea pigs. That's a okay. guinea pig? And that's a skinny pig. You can see these guys are hairless. Yeah, really cool. So guinea pigs actually, fun fact, they're not from Guinea and they're also not a pig. Um, most people believe they got their name from the high-pitched squealing noise that they make, which is very similar to a pig. Okay. One of them, they're really shy <laughs> animals. So these guys we just got in are really small babies, right? Um, Something really interesting, they, they mature fully in two to three months. So they're f almost full grown in, within two to three months of being born, but they are born fully furred with their eyes open. Um, they already have their teeth, claws, and they're, um, they actually start eating regular food right away and they wean from their moms within two weeks. So guinea pigs in the uh, wild are in large, large um, groups. And colonies. They, colonies, there you go. I couldn't kind of come up with the word. So, um, in the pet industry, there's a ton of different um, sub, like um, breeds of guinea pigs. There's silkies, abyssinians. Um, like I said, we mentioned the the, um, the skinny pigs. There's also teddy bears. So ton, and then short hairs. So uh, and then they come in a ton of different colors and different variations. So very adorable little animals. And that's the guinea pig. Cool. All right, the next animal we're going to talk about today are our Guyana toucanets. So this is a actual miniature toucan. Um, let's see if the one to come out for me. There we go. All right. So these guys are actually considered dimorphic and they are males. Um, the females have a redder crest and then they don't get this yellow line. So the yellow line can take up to a year to come in, but these, they're already starting to come in. Uh, toucans are a type of soft bill bird, meaning that their beaks are not hard. They can't do much damage with it. So they're not able to make their own um, tree nests or anything like that, they'll actually use old nests in the wild. They are found in the rainforest of Brazil. They live to be 20 years old. Um, the oldest ever recorded was 28 years old. Um, and they are the most successfully bred bird in, um, toucan bird in captivity. 
there's 40 different types of toucans, and this is the one that you're gonna most widely find in the pet industry. Um, they've been domesticated for a very long time, and they do make fairly good pets. They require a um, more highly specialized diet in that they eat mostly fruits, um, which interesting fact about their mating in the um, wild or in captivity, their mating ritual, which many birds dance for each other, the males will dance to attract the females, the toucans or the Guyana toucanets will actually throw fruit back and forth to each other to decide on their mate. So whoever is the best fruit tosser will win out. This one's he wants really to know what I'm doing. <laughs> very checking me out. Um, they're a fairly fast bird. They grow. Um, they can fly as fast as 40 miles an hour, but they don't fly very far from where they home. So wherever they pick to live, they'll stay in that territory. And they're solitary birds in the wild. They live by themselves unless they're mating. Um, I think that's about all I got. These guys are extremely friendly. They're very popular as pets because of how friendly they are, and they're an extremely quiet bird. They're not known for much noise. All right. And that's the animals we have for today. Thanks for watching. Oh, I hit the